All right, so this is a game from Aegean. It was a competitor to Victoria 3. Well, Victoria 2 actually. It was released in 2010, just after V2. Uh, set in the same period as you can see, from 1850 to 19-something. I don't quite think we'll get that far in the game. Uh, one astute thing is you might not have realized, but it's already been like five minutes I'm waiting here on the screen. Uh, it's getting fairly uh, long to be waiting for a game. Ah, eventually we get to the beauty of 800 by 600 graphic designs of the 2010s. Well, you missed that period. Ooh, even the music. This is beautiful. Great sound. Sounds like we are going into a nation building game. Even the menu, if you go through every single little fine details and options, it's just incredible. Oh no. Turn compression for multiplayer though. That's a bad outlook for the game here. All right, so let's just jump in and start in 1850 on a grand campaign and see what this game has in stock for us. Ah, so this is this type of game where you choose the flag and not from a map. Hmm. Not quite sure now thinking about that, which country I like to play. It's just surprising, I think, you delve into this type of game knowing exactly what you're gonna do. Of course, you'll be forming Germany. There's no reason not to do that in any game set in the Victorian era. It's just the right thing to do. Alright, so let's jump right in and... Wow. This is shocking to look at. Don't you think so? The scale of the GUI is just atrocious. Look in the top left corner, a little bit of animation and the logos, it's flashing. The map look, hide this. And it's kind of flaggy, but I know a little trick. You won't believe me, but if you load in every little map chunk in the RAM memory of your computer, the game's just gonna run better. I swear, I don't know why, it's just, it's just a thing. So whenever you play AGI games, just toss the salad. That's how I like to call it, because the map looks like a salad. You just toss in everything in the memory. I hope this, this didn't make it more awkward than it had to be, really. The music make it fitting, for sure. But really, if you just look at the map, I think there's a lot of qualities you can put and attribute the quality of the drawings, how well it represents the different weathers and climates. But uh, no, if you zoom in, uh, I don't know, I feel like it just doesn't cut it. And I know it's in the GI game, but remember, competition was Victoria 2. Would you rather play V2 or play Pride of Nations? And we're just at first impressions here, right? See all these options, all these scripts, little system, mechanics that no one really got to play with in the history of the game. Hmm. We're all gonna have to go through all of that today. There's so much complexity behind Pride of Nations. How is it possible that someone could make a video on playing Pride of Nations? I really sit in time. You know, to uh, actually when I will no longer be playing this game, which is like in five minutes from now. But maybe one day I will return this precious gem of a title. Look at the beauty after all. Just gonna lead that nation and take it from the mangled remains of HRE. And look at all these colors of maps that we have available. Look at all the information will ever desire much more than we'll actually care about and that's on our layer of complexity with Pride of Nations uh, if you are like me and your type of player to not not even just watch the tutorial videos that devs are releasing right now but on top of that 
you don't even do the core essential rule that I even instructed everybody to do in my previous tutorial of uh, To End All War. And it is to RTFM. Read the fucking manual, that's all. If you plan on playing this game, you need to read the manual. Alea Yakte A is, unlike Pride of Nations, a much more approachable title. I'm not even hassled to do that. I'm just looking at the pretty maps. Greens and blues. Of course, purple. The climates. Hmm. All of that, there's so much control information in this game. I think we need something more simple. I'm not even moving. There's not even music. I've just stuck in place for like two minutes. And nothing was happening. I actually was just taking a break. But, you know, it's impressive. Like, no music, nothing, no involvement. This truly feels like a map game. A map painter. Right? This is the feeling I have here. This isn't a complex game where you have to dwell hundreds of hours and reading the manual alone and then learning every intricacies of every complex system. No. This is a game about painting maps. And I know it. You know it. Everybody know it. Now we just need to, you know, actually figure out how to invade our neighbors. And then uh, we will prove to the entire world that Pride of Nation is not a complex game. I'm sure this game will nicely and gladly show me the correct way it will handhold me like I'd expect any great games of self-respecting titles to be doing. Just showing me the green numbers. Where do I click? How do I invade? Just tell me game. Make it so simple and easy. Why does it have to be such a mess? I guess that's probably what's going through the head of many people right now. And uh, certainly going through my own mind right now. How do I actually invade Luxembourg? Oh no, that's actually Bavaria. Oh. But is Bavaria even my friend? It's 1850, right? So I'm thinking back to the situation of Victoria 2, which starts in 1836, which means by 1850, I have no fucking clue about the geopolitical reality of Europe. And I'm pretty sure Pride of Nations take grand considerations of the different layout of the world. Oh, hold up. Do you actually see that? No, no, no. It can't be real. It has to be a joke, right? This mode? Decision mode can be accessed with a shortcut Alt F4. Is the game fucking around with me? It has to be, right? I have to. This can't be, right? The game can't tell me, okay? So, yeah, yeah. It seems like there's a certain consistency. The other modes are Alt F1, Alt F2. Hmm. I guess the next one will be Alt F3, of course. Yep. Colonial mode. Alt F3. So, do I want to jump into Alt F4 and see decision with the shortcut? I guess there's only a way to see if that works out. Right. Alt F1, Alt F2, Alt F3. Alt F4. 